Foxborough West Beer and Steel here with Johnny and the Gatsby. Hello. How are you guys uh, doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having us on. Yeah, nice no problem. Here. So, first question. What inspired the name of your thing? Obviously, it's John and the Baptist, but yes, why did you want to My name is religious? Johnny. We wanted to be called Johnny and the Depths uh -huh. after Johnny Depp. Um, but I don't know why that fell away. Because you know the idea in a band that um, if you fill in for someone, you're called a Depp. And I've got yeah. Johnny and the Depths, that'd be funny. Um, and then we decided to join Johnny and the Baptists. John the Baptist, of course, famously came before the Messiah to give a warning. So maybe that's what we're doing. Yeah. But with comedy songs and our sing about. <laughs> so it's called Bigger Than Judas. This year, yes. Yeah. Why the title? Oh, it's just three words that are funny. Three words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why the title? Well, uh, we, we, I wanted to call, basically by the time we'd written the show, I knew what I wanted to call it. But until we had, it was very difficult to work that out. Because uh, we tour all year round. You kind of end up in a situation where you go, okay, well, I know there's going to be these five songs, but I haven't really worked out what the narrative of the show is. And now what the show should be called Ten Songs About You, Kip, which is sort of what it really is. Uh, it's sort of, we do a number of songs about uh, the United Kingdom Independence Party and what absolute twats they are. Yeah. Um, can I say twat? Yes. I've just said it twice, so if I can't, we're going to say it again. Twat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever said it? No, I'm going to save it. All right, fine. Save it for later, yeah. So do you feel like there's quite a political message in most of your songs? Well, I don't know if there's, yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely political engagement. Yeah. I mean, there isn't really a message in that we don't try and sort of preach or anything. I mean, that's, uh, that would be ridiculous, especially with the name. But, um, no, I just think it's just a, I mean, essentially, like, the, the thing about UKIP and the thing about quite a lot of things going on at the moment is that they are born out of people not really thinking about it, not really thinking things through. And that's just the message of the show. I mean, there's lots of jokes and there's lots of fun and there's songs about soup and there's a song called Boom, Motherfucker. You know, like, there's <laughs> lots of fun stuff. But also, like, if the show has a message, it is just think for a minute, not even a minute, like five seconds. Mm. Well, if you looked for a second at what you kid was, you would never vote for it unless you were an absolute asshole. And a lot of the people who vote for them are absolute assholes. Uh, and it's to them that we're speaking. Yeah. yeah. So how did you guys meet each other? We met at a wedding. A wedding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, we were basically Paddy was a um, guitarist uh, and session musician, and I was a comedian, and I did a bit of singing, and he'd done a little sketch comedy, and we decided to put the two together uh, through a mutual interest in. Uh, we both liked um, David Bowie and Depeche Mode, uh, and hated weddings. So uh, all those things came together at a wedding, and we decided we'd put some comedy music together Brilliant. and halve our potential income. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have seen one of your songs, which is like, "Do It in the Library." Yes. Right. Can I ask where was this library, and how were you allowed to do this? Oh, you can have. It's hilarious. Uh, you can have sex in any public or municipal library without any problem whatsoever. Just go into a section that isn't very popular. Yeah. Uh, no, there's no problem with that whatsoever. Sex in a library seems a perfectly reasonable thing to do. As long as it's not in the children's section. Just not exactly. in the children's section. Well, I'm going to shut the libraries down, and I think if you're going to, you know, just if you're banging in there, people aren't going to shut it down around you. So yeah, that'll do. That's something, isn't it? Brilliant. So you've got another show as well. Yes. Solo stand up show. Solo stand up show. It's called, it's called Johnny Donahoe uh, Class Four. Uh, and it's about how I grew up uh, in Reading on a council estate and went to have the poshest voice since the last Earl. Um, <laughs> and I suppose that's really what it's about. It's at 125 in the underbelly um, Bristol Square. Brilliant. And are you working on anything solo? Um, no, I do a podcast uh, called Pod, Pod Shambles, Shambles, which is much more about video games and, and stuff. It's a, it, it's a lot less politically hard hitting. It's sort of the other thing that I do. Where can people find your podcast? Uh, on iTunes or um, or on the the, the internet. Uh, just Pod Shambles, um, all one word. And yeah, you can download it from there. It's free, of course. Uh, otherwise, I'd be a bastard. But, yeah, um, check it out. So where and when is your Duo show on. Nine forty, uh, the Pleasant's Ten Dome at nine forty. I think I've said that. Nine forty. Did I mention it's at nine forty? Nine forty p.m. every day um, in the Pleasant's Dome. It's uh, very popular. Um, it is. I don't know why I said it like that. That really sounds like <laughs> sort of <laughs> trying to undermine yourself. It's really difficult. So I'm not. I'm kind of selling yourself seems like such a sort of a, you know kind of whorish, unpleasant thing to do. But it's a yeah, it's a great show. So do come along if you'd like. If you can get to. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming and speaking to us, guys. It's been a real pleasure. Thank You've you been for watching. Us. No problem at all. You've been watching Waffle TV.